بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. This is lesson number four from the three fundamental principles of the Sula Thalatha. Inshallah, today we'll continue where we left off uh, last week, inshallah. So, uh, the writer and the author, Muhammad ibn Abdul uh, Wahab, al Imam, al Tamimi, said, Al Ula al Amn. That's what we talked about there. He said, You know, Al Amn al Durak al Shayala Mahu Ali al Durak al Jaziman. Al Durak al Dud al Jahl. It's the opposite, it's the antonym of, uh, of uh, ignorance. Because obviously, العلم هو إدراك الشيء على ما هو عليه إدراك جازما. And Jahl, of course, is a, like al Amrit said in his, uh, his Nazm of Al-Warqat. He said, وَجَهْلُكُ تَصَوُّرُ الشَّيْءَ عَلَى خِلَافِ وَصْفِهِ الَّذِي بِهِ عَلَى So he said, Jahl is a تَصَوُّرُ الشَّيْءَ Like when you, <coughs> when you think of something and you try to come up with the answer of something, تَصَوُّرُ الشَّيْءَ عَلَى خِلَافِ you, you, you come up with a, a conclusion about this thing, khilaf wasfihi, against, and it's against the actual, factual, re, real characteristics of that thing. Alladhi bihi ala. And so the, the characteristic that, that, is, that it's on, you know, the, these are, you come up with an answer that's not the answer or doesn't match the characteristics of that thing. We say, waqila haddul jahli faqudu ilmi, basitan al muraqaban konsumi. So here he talks about the two different types of jahl, which is al jahl al muraqab and jahl basit. And he said, He said that the, that the boundaries are set at Jahl Fakud al Enmi, that you know the absence of knowledge. Basitan al Murakab. And those are the two types, uh Jahl Basit with Jahl Murakab, Qada Sumi, and they were named. These are the, the names of those the two types of Jahl. Basitu Fikulima Tahta Tharata Rakibu Fikulima Tasuwira. So basically Jahl Basit is just to say like I don't know. If somebody asks you a question, like for example, whether it's a masala and a deen, or even if it's just a person, like if somebody came up to you and said, "Do you know Ahmed?" and you say, "No, I don't. I don't know Ahmed. I don't know who he is. I don't know where he's at." So that's just that's that would be considered jahl basit. Jahl al murakab is when you try to answer the question, but you don't know. You you don't know, and even if you get the answer right, you're still jahl because you didn't know. It's just guessing. You know, you just uh, this is called takhmin in lughat al arabi to, to, to guess. But but in reality, you still have the same type of ignorance because you you know you're answering without knowledge, and by you answering without knowledge, and, and like we said, knowledge is ilm idrak shay, alama hu ali idrak and jaziman, jaziman certain, no doubt in it. So if you for any time that you do something, you answer a question without that type of certainty and uh, lack of doubt, then you're not answering with knowledge. You know, knowledge is that you're certain, even if you're wrong. Like you could be wrong. I mean, that's not saying that. You know, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about the, you know, the mushrikun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَرِحُوا بِمَا عِنْدَهُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ فَرِحُوا بِمَا عِنْدَهُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called what they had is ilm. Even though we understand this is not the actual understanding of ilm in the, in the religion, but it's ilm as far as lugha, you know, as far as, the, for, as far as the language is concerned. Because what they were upon, they, they thought that they had some certainty that what they were doing was correct. But they were wrong. And when the truth came to them, you know, that they, they took them out of their certainty and caused them to doubt, they no longer had knowledge anymore. Now they're, now it became manifested they're upon jahl, and they refused to accept it. And then, then they became arrogant. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Fir'aun, وَجَهَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْكَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعْلُوَا You know, وَجَهَدُوا بِهَا وَجَهَدْ A jahad is, is when you, when you uh, deny something that you know is true. You know, you deny something that you know is true. So Fir'aun, he came to the truth, and you know, وَجَهَدُوا بِهَا وَجَهَدُوا بِهَا بِالْحَقُ بِالَّذِي جَاءَ بِهِ مُوسَى عَلَيْهِ السلام. You know, and he, 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 uh, he disbelieved in everything that Musa alayhi salam came after he knew that it was the truth. وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعْلُوَى And inside their, 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 their hearts, اسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, اسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا He didn't say, تَيَقَنَتْهَا He said, اسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا uh, and that, that shows that like, they just reached a high level of certainty. That this is the truth. That there was no doubt. You know, but dhulman It was all, all from arrogance and oppression that they refused to accept the truth. So, uh, knowledge is idraq al ala ma hu and jaziman. And even the person, if he's not right, if he's not correct, but once the, once the truth has been made manifest to him, you don't say that he has knowledge now. Because now, if he refuses to accept the truth, now he's jahl. But he's jahl, jahl muraqab, not jahl basit, because now the jahl, uh, jahl muraqab is when you try to answer and you try to act like you know, but you don't know. And like I said, even if you're, even if you're right, it doesn't matter because you're still, you know, sahib jahl muraqab, Allah musta'an.
So that's uh, that's the meaning of the in the language. Now here, and the the author, Al Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, Allah yirhamu, he's going to bring the understanding of what knowledge is in the religion. And he said, the ulama al-am, wa huwa ma'rifatu Allahi wa ma'rifatu nabiyyihi wa ma'rifatu din al-islami bil adillah. So he mentioned these things. Uh, this is knowledge. This is real knowledge and because this is the only knowledge that can benefit you in in, in this life and the next. A uh, certain knowledge from the from the from the life of this world it, it might benefit you as far as getting a job and doing things and and maintaining a, a type of living by the permission of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life, but it has no benefit for you in the next life. But this type of knowledge, the knowledge of the akhirah, it benefits you both in this life and in the next life. And it becomes a benefit for all the people around you. So this is the best type of knowledge. And this is the type of knowledge that the person should spend all the, the vast amount of his energy trying to obtain. You know, whether it be going out and seeking the knowledge, if he's not capable of going out and seeking the knowledge for whatever reasons, maybe financial reasons, maybe the person might be even, you know, like a lot of our brothers, they become... Muslim and they're locked up and they can't leave the prison, obviously, to go seek knowledge, but they, they try to seek knowledge to the best of their capabilities. Each person, each Muslim on the face of this earth has that type of obligation upon him to seek amount, the amount of knowledge that he has to seek or she to, you know, be able to worship his or her, his or her Lord correctly. And that's, that's an obligation upon us. And we talk about like, you know, the you know, that the, the, the seeking of knowledge is an obligation upon the, upon this nation, uh, you know, uh, upon the Muslims. You know, th this is an obligation for everybody. But it's an obligation for each person to go out and seek the amount of knowledge that they need to do what they need to do to to, to give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his rights. Because that's the most, you know, that's the, that should be our number one priority in this life is making sure that we focus on trying to give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not trying, but actually giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his rights first before before anybody else. See, everybody, if you look in the West, they talk about human rights, they talk about animal rights, but they never talk about the rights of the Creator, the Creator that put us on this earth, the Creator that sustained us, the Creator that sends the, uh, you know, the, the, the rain from the sky, you know, that the gave us life and, and it causes us to die. And then in the end, He's going to be the judge between us, uh, whether we're going to go to Jannah or we're going to Jahannam. So this is, these, these are the rights that everybody needs to, be, uh, needs to be focused on. And these are the rights that you should be you know, it should be your top priority every single day, the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because no matter what we do, no matter how much we worship Allah, no matter how much Quran we read, no matter how many times we pray, no matter how much da'wah we try to give, we can never, ever, ever, ever fulfill the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over us. We can't. But we can only try and die, die upon, you know, that we, you know, at our deaths that we try to the best, the best of our capabilities, that we really put in the effort. Because we put in the effort in everything else. You know, you look at like a lot of the Muslims that are athletes. Look at the type of effort that they put in to like perfecting the game that they're playing, whether it's football, basketball, whatever. <clears throat> you see that. You see that type of effort. But then when it comes into, you know, it comes time to put in that same type of effort, you know, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that effort is it, not there. It doesn't, and you know, everybody starts making up excuses because that's not our priority. We don't care. And that's uh, because also the people aren't teaching the people, this is what we need to be focused on. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and I didn't create the, you know, the jinn and the mankind and mankind except for to worship me. That's it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for his worship, to fulfill his rights first. And then if we if we fulfill his rights, just like the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal, anhu, which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya Mu'adh, atadri ma haqullahi ala libadi wa ma haqul ibadi ala Allah. And he asked Mu'adh, he said, do you know what the rights are of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over, are over a servant? And what the servant and the, and the rights that the servant has with Allah? And he said, Allah wa Rasulullah alam. He said, Allah and his messenger know best. And he said, Haqullahi ala, ala libadi and ya'buduhu wa lai shuriku bi shayin. He said that the rights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has over a servant, that, he, that they worship him. And they don't associate any partners in his worship. Wa haqul ibadi ala Allahi and la yu'adhiba man la yushuriku bi shayin. And the rights that the, the, the servant have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and these are not rights that are like our, you know, our, our God-given rights, as we say. No, these are rights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put on himself, not that we put on him. You know, because, uh, you know, we don't, we don't have any real rights over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have no rights whatsoever. And that's why I said rights with Allah and not rights, on, you know, over, or like, over Allah or on Allah. We don't have those types of rights. These are rights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put on himself. You understand? So... <clears throat> so here, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you know, the, the, the rights that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has put on himself is that he will not punish any servant 
that does not associate any partners in worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Mu'ad said, you know, if Allah ubashiru nas, baqala Allah to bashirun fayyat taqilu. And this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. He said, should I not give glad tidings to the people, you know, about this, what you just told me? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, la to bashirum, la, don't, don't, don't give them those glad tidings, but yet taqilu, that they would like uh, depend on this. And then they stop, they stop acting because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants the people to act and try to do everything that they can do to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why we need to have knowledge. We have to seek knowledge into the, to the point that we can actually understand what the rights are what are the what are the rights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has over us and try to fulfill those rights to the best of our capabilities? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says aqimu salat. We need to know what iqamat salat is. We need to know uh, and because we have to pray and we need tahara for prayer, we need to know what tahara is. We need to know all these affairs of our religion. If you're doing business, you need to know the laws of transaction and you need to make sure that you don't fall into fall into something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made impermissible for you to fall into. And you make sure that you don't treat don't cheat the people. You know, because everything that you do, you're trying to do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even your business, you try to do it in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah in all cases. So if you're a businessman, it's a, it is an obligation upon you to learn uh, as much as you can about trade and commerce and everything that you, that you need to make sure that you don't fall into something haram. You know, that way you don't have to like fall into things and then have to go and ask after the fact. You know, it's a protection from you falling into it instead of you constantly going to the ulama saying, oh, this happened and this happened after the fact because you didn't fulfill your obligation. You got into business, but you didn't know anything about the laws of business. You got into marriage, but you didn't know anything about the laws of marriage. And you, you know, all these things that you're doing on a regular basis and you have no, no knowledge of the, the, the laws and regulations in Islam in regards to these things, that's oppression. And you're going in with, with an ignorance and you end up oppressing other people. You know, that's not, it's not permissible. You go and you seek knowledge to the best of your capabilities. And so you have the knowledge to, to fulfill the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after the, you know, after you fulfill the rights of Allah, then also you have to, the, you know, the, the rights of the people around you. You have the, you know, you can't go around oppressing people and doing things wrong because of your lack of knowledge. So if you have a business, you learn the, you learn the uh, laws and, and the regulations in Islam in regards to commerce. You know, this way you don't oppress people. And you don't do something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made haram for you to do. And in, in it, everything, you know, everything, marriage, divorce, uh, also like hajj, salat, zakat, psalm, all of these things, we have to have at least a rudimentary knowledge so we can do these actions the way in accordance with the kitab sunnah, you know, and, and that way we're fulfilling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rights upon us. So he said, Al-Am, wa huwa ma'rifatullah. The first one is uh, that, he, that he knows Allah. And of course, uh, both of these things, ma'rifatullah wa ma'rifatul nabiyyi wa ma'rifatul deen al-islam bil adillah, all of these three things, they come from the same sources. Okay, because except for, you know, wa ma'rifatullah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have an extra one because we have two types of dala'al. You know, these are like two different types of evidences to show that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a right to be created. Uh, he has the right to be worshipped, sorry. Uh, and uh, those two things, it's gonna come in this uh, in this in this book, and then uh, where the where the author says will be ayati wa makhlukati, you know, from his ayat and his makhlukat, and also from the evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah. So when we look at the Quran, uh, you know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in different ayat, He shows us, He He, he guides us to to looking into into the creation, and and to see that all the things that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has created to know that this cannot come about by accident. And this cannot come come about except for with purpose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in, his, in the Quran, He said, وَفِي الْأَرْضِ آيَاتٌ لِلْمُوْقِنِينَ You know, وَفِي الْأَرْضِ and in this earth, uh, ayat, there, there are signs, لِلْمُوْقِنِينَ for the people that have certainty. They have certainty with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the people that have doubt, they don't see those signs. The people that have doubt and they run around and, you know, like the, with a philosophical attitude about questioning everything and causing doubt with everything, they don't, they're not able to see that. Because, uh, you know, the doubt has clouded their minds. So any person, whether he's a Muslim or a non-Muslim, he can look at the creation, look at the movement of the stars, look at the, the sun and the sun and the moon and how they're, you know, they, they follow the same pattern year after year, decade after decade. And anybody can know that any, you know, that atheism is not true and it's falsehood. And, and anything, anybody that denies any, you know that there's a creator and a sustainer of this world and the one that keeps everything in a complete organization is foolish because all you have to do is look at this creation and look at everything and how 
everything functions in accord and like in complete harmony with each other. The rain, the wind, the sun, the moon, and everything functions functions together in harmony and with organization. You know, even to the point like you know, like the the sun and the moon, the sun rising in the east and setting in the west, and the movement of the moon from the you know from a from a new moon to a full moon, and then you know the 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 waxing and the waning of the moon to the point that it goes back to another new moon. And this has been going on for thousands and thousands of years. Anybody that does not look at these types of things and sees that, that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, is in control of everything, then he's foolish. So there's two types of like, evidence. I, I stated previously, but I didn't mention them. I only said the ayat wa makhluqat. So the first type of uh, dalil is a uh, sami'i. Dalil a sami'i, which means that, you know, this is derived, this type of uh, evidence is taken from, uh, from the kitab, from the sunnah. I'm, I'm going to get to that in a second. And the other type is al-aqli. Things that you can just look at. Like, for example, looking at the sun, the moon, and everything. Like like uh, the story of Ibrahim, alayhi salam, with his people. When he was looking at the, the sun, and then the sun said, he said, you know. And the story is in Surah Al-An'am. And it starts off with all the, you know. فَلَمَّا جَعَ جَنَّ عَلَيْهِ اللَّيْلِ رَأَى كَوْكَبَ You know, once uh, once the uh, once uh, once it became night, Jannah alayhi layl. It means it became the darkness of a night of night. Ra'a Kokaba. They translate Kokab as a planet. It's a it's a it's a big star. Kala hadha Rabbi Falama Afala Kala La Hibul Afilim. So Al Afal Falama Afala Afala it means it like Layadum. It doesn't stay, it goes away. You know, Layadum. It doesn't it's not everlasting, it just it just goes away. So so he said, La La Hibul Afilim. So of course uh, he, he did this Falama Ra al Kamar, Falama Ra al Shams. Okay, and he did this with his people. And he did this uh, uh, because a lot of the people, they took these ayat from the Quran to say that this was at a time when Ibrahim didn't know his Lord and, and he did these as uh, did this action as a sign to get to know his Lord. And this is not true. This is not true. Okay, because what he's doing, he's, he's doing this as a hujjah, as an as a evidence and a proof against his people. So he's taking them out and he's showing them. He saw the planet. He saw the like the big star, and he said, "Ahad and and, and the taqdir of the ayah, Ahad Rabbi, are you trying to say that this is my Lord?" And then he said, "Falama afala kala la ahibul afinim." He said, and "Once it disappeared and it went away, he said la ahibul afinim." I don't like the things that are not everlasting; they don't they don't stay with us. And the same thing, falama ra al qamar bazaqan, you know, right? You know, clear as day, you know, kala kala ahad Rabbi, and the, and the understanding of the ayah, Ahad Rabbi. Is this my Lord? Are you trying to tell me that this is my Lord? Call it. Uh, all right. And then he said, uh, If my if my Lord does not guide me, then I'll be amongst from the amongst the people of misguidance, like these people, like his own people. So this was done as a as a sort of argument against his people to show them the truth, to try to bring them to the understanding. And this is, of course, goes back to the dalil al aqli which means using the mind, using the mind to see things that are clear. That don't, you know, if you look at the everything that goes on in a, in our in the world and the organization of everything, you don't need evidence to know that somebody's in control of it, because just like a, a ship needs a captain, a, a company needs a, somebody in control, a, a car needs a driver, so the earth, you know, and everything within it, and all the creation needs someone in control and it's impossible to say that all of this organization the most organized thing on the on, uh, you know in, in the in the whole i mean well we don't know if it's the most organized thing in all of creation but I mean, we, what we from what we see we see everything within this earth had the organization you know we don't have that type of organization in our lives so we only see that with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything is perfect everything is perfect even the events in your life it happened. Even whether you like it or dislike it, when you look back at it, you see the purpose of why that event happened in your life. There's no way that you can sit back and use your mind and say, nah, there's no creator. This is all this is all happening by accident. It's all happening by accident. That's foolish. So uh, the types of the two types of dalil are sami'i, which means that you look in the Quran and you look in the Sunnah. And this is how we learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his names, his attributes, the Uluhiyah, the Rububiyah, all of this, the evidence, it comes out. I mean, well, the evidence of Rububiyah, can, uh, you, you can also see it in the creation. But uh, 
the, like the ulu here, the asma wa sifat, like we don't take, you can't sit there and, you know, use your aql for like asma wa sifat or ulu here and things like that. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, any, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do all that he's done and the creation. Now we, we, we know that him being in control of everything, that he's the only one that has the right to be worshipped. And we also know by using our mind that there's no way that he could have any partners because we see what happens on this earth when people have partners and what, what you know, how they sit there and they fight and they go against each other whenever there's partners. So we, we know, you know, like if you look in a, in a country, there can only be one king. If another king comes up, then what happens? Chaos. You know, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us that example in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Surah Al-Anbiya, لَوْ كَانَ فِيهِمَا آلِهَةٌ إِلَّا اللَّهُ لَفَسَدَتَا فَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَرَشِ عَمَّا يَسِفُونَ He said if there, were, if there were guys beside him, you know, in the heavens and the earth, إِلَّا اللَّهُ لَفَسَدَتَا Everything would become corrupted. If, if this was a sharing thing, you know, like some, you know, some people say there's a creator of good and there's a creator of evil, all this type of foolishness and nonsense, there can only be one creator. Because if there were any more creators, there'd be corruption all throughout the land. Because each person, each each ilah would be fighting against the other to take complete control. And that's just the nature of, of all things as we see. We see this in this life. You know, they say too many chefs spoil the broth, right? So whenever you have too many people vying for control, then you just have chaos. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one. And you look at the creation and you can see that. Everything in his creation, it shows that he's one. Because there's too, the, the organization and the, and the harmony, everything working together. It can only be from one source. It can't be from different sources because if there were different sources, you know, think, think about it. Just, just use your mind. And I mean, just think about like, let's look at the dunya. And just like, just to show you, like, use your mind. If you had a project and you had two or three different companies working together on one project, do you think that project would have a good outcome? Everything would get destroyed. Because each person will be trying to buy to get his, his ideas out and get his ideas to be, to be the ideas that control everything. It's impossible. The only way that you can have harmony in this, in, in this earth is with one God. One God that's worthy of worship. That's it. And everything else is, is just is, is falsehood. Everything else is falsehood. And everything, that, that, that's, that's the Dalil al-Aqli. If you look at the creation, you'll see that. And the Dalil al-Sami'i, you see that. You see, you know, you see the rights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has over us. We see in the Quran and the Sunnah the things that we have to do to fulfill these rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his names and his attributes. And we see all this through the kitab and the sunnah. Because this we need evidence for that. And that's the Dalil as Sami'i. Wa ma'rifat Alright, so ma'rifat Allahi wa ma'rifat nabiyihi. And and to know his his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we know his messenger, of course, through the Quran and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about him in the Quran. And we, we really get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger through, through his sunnah. Through constantly, constantly, constantly reading his sunnah. A lot of people sit there and say, oh, you know, to read the sirah, the sirah which is the, the biography of the prophet. No, you read his sunnah. Okay, because a lot of the stories in the sirah, uh, there's no, you know, they don't have a strong hadith behind them. You really want to know the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you read the sunnah. You read al-Bukhari. You read the muslim You read the, the, the kutub al sunan you read all the books of hadith that you can possibly read. That's how you're going to get to know the Prophet ﷺ. And that's why if you look at like uh, the book that Ibn Qayyim wrote, which is Zad al-Ma'ad, which is not even a book of sirah. It's not even a book of the life of the Prophet ﷺ. But uh, Zad al-Ma'ad, what he did with that book is he gave you the best glimpse at the life of the Prophet through his sunnah. Because it's not. It's, I mean, it's more of a book of fiqh than it is a book of sirah. You know, but uh, if you look at the book and you read, Zad al-Ma'ad, you get a whole glimpse of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu And you really, really get a good understanding, but it's through his sunnah, through the ahadith, and also through the ayat that talk about, like, for example, different different things that happen in the, in the lifetime of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Because different battles are mentioned in, uh, in, in different surah, uh, sur, different events, different uh, different things. You have like, uh, you know, uh, Surah Al-Tahrim, Surah Al-Talaq. We have different events that happen in the time with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we, we have a, a whole glimpse of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through the Quran and through his Sunnah. And then the last thing he said, Islam bil adilla. So to know the religion of Islam with evidence. And of course we know that the evidence uh, according to the ulama is of four types. We have the Quran, we have the Sunnah, we have the Ijma' and we have the Qiyas al-Sahih. And the Qiyas al-Sahih, and I say Sahih and I'll get to that in a second, because Qiyas in itself is not actually evidence in this religion. 
And that's why it's got to be muqayyid. It's got to be stipulated that this is qiyas al-sahih. But the actual evidence in this religion is the Quran, the Sunnah, and the Ijma'. And the qiyas is tabi'. I mean, it follows those three things as long as it's used in the right way and with the right intentions. And we'll get to that in a second. So the first evidence is the, uh, the evidence of the Quran and the evidence of the Sunnah. And of course, this has to be based on the understanding of the Sahaba and of the Tabi'een and the atba uh, the, uh, of the Atba'a Tabi'een, the three best generations. And this, of course, came in a hadith on Imran ibn Hussein, radiallahu anhu, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qala, inna khayrakum qarani, thumma alladhina yulunahum, thumma alladhina yulunahum, thumma, thumma yukunu ba'dahum qawmun yishhadun wa la yustashhadun, wa yakhunun wa la yu'tamanun, wa yanzurun wa la yufun, wa yitharu fihim al-siman, al-siman, mutafakun alayhi. So this hadith is in Bukhari Muslim and Imran ibn Hussein, which he said the, uh, the, the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called in the Karani. The best amongst you is, is my generation, the generation that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent in. And that's the Sahaba, Thumma Ladina Yalunahum. And that's the and those are the Tabi'un, the students of the Sahaba. Thumma Ladina Yalunahum. And those are the Ba'u Tabi'in, the students of the students of the Sahaba. Thumma Yukuna Ba'dahum Kaumun Yashadun. And then then will come after them a people that will bear witness. Well, I used to shadun. And their their, their witness was never sought because of them not having fulfilling the conditions. A bearing witness because of you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran in Surah Al Hujurat he said, Ya ayyuha ladina aminu in jaakum fasikum bi naba in fatabayinu and to see bo kaman bi jahalatin fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum nadi me. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Oh you oh you who believe. If a person if a if a if an unrighteous person comes to you, a person, a very sinful person, because the fasak is a person who's gone out of the of the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because fasaka, fasaka it means al khuruj, it means kharaja. It means to leave out of, you know, to leave something. And that's why you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about Iblis for Fasaqa and Amri Rabbi. That he left out of the obedience of his Lord. He Fasaqa. Fasaqa means Kharaja. So he said, Fasikun, anybody that is left out of guidance, like left out of the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fasik. And he said, if, if any type of uh, sinful person comes to you with uh, information, go back and check it. Fatabayyin. Go back and see if this is true. Don't just take his uh, don't take his uh, information. It's not permissible. Whether that, especially, I mean, obviously, this is talking about a Muslim, a non-Muslim. You know, min babul min babulula. You know, like you don't you don't take their their word for anything. And the Prophet ﷺ he mentioned that when we deal with the with the uh, with information that we get from like the the people of the book, he said uh, you know about like la no sadiku la no kathibu. We don't we don't say it's truthful and we don't lie. We don't say it's a lie. And that hadith came in Bukhari and Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu. so we don't like as far as the non-Muslims are concerned, we don't there's no absolutely no believing what they say until we have clear evidence that what they say is true. But with the with the with the uh, sinful Muslims, well, if they come to a, if they come with us any type of news to us, we go back and we check it. You know? And you, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa taala said, "And to see bukaman bi jahala, fatusbihu ala ma fa'atum nadi min." Because you might take that information, and you might go and, and maybe attack a people or do something, and and you know, there's no there's no reason behind it. So uh, certain people before all you know uh, all these types of tribulations before them just because of this this uh, sinful person and his false uh, false accusations or his false speaking. So this is what the Prophet Sallallahu is talking about when he says, Because they're from the Fusaq. So nobody wants the Shahada anyways, but they give it, you know, and they give the Shahada before they're, before they're asked for it, and they wouldn't be asked for it because they don't fulfill the conditions of, of uh, making the Shahada. Because the, the Shahada has to be from a person who's Adil. There has to be Adala. We don't just take the shahada or uh, a witness of any person on the street like America. If you look in the American uh, justice, uh, well, injustice system, what do you see? They use like jailhouse snitches, drug dealers, and everybody. And they use this. They use these individuals as witnesses, knowing that these these individuals are only, you know, witnessing on the stand just to get a, a lesser jail sentence. And they'll say anything that anything. They'll say anything that the prosecutor wants them to say just so they can get a reduced sentence. And this is what they do. And they use these, these types of witnesses to put people in, in prison for long, long, long sentences. You know, and, and, and they call this justice. So no, nah, I mean, and that's from the signs of the last day. They're like, for you, 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 for you
So they come up and they say, hey, I, I, I saw this, I saw this. And nobody even wants their witness. And you look at it, these are the most, the, the most sinful people. And they, and they use these individuals for, uh, for evidence in the court and call this justice. So he said, And they act treacherously, treacherously. Yeah, and they, you know, they have no amana, which means no trust. You can't trust them for anything. He said, And another, of course, is by that you swear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you something, that you'll do this and this and this. So you make this uh, as an obligation upon yourself. And they, they, they say, like, for example, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives me uh, the money that I need to do this and this and this, I'll, I'll fast for, for six months straight. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him the money, but he doesn't fulfill his obligations. He doesn't fulfill his nother. He said, And that, they, that, you know, that fatness, it starts to increase in them. And it becomes apparent in them. Because, uh, you know, the type of life, they don't have that type of difficult life anymore. There's a lot of ease in their life. So they start to increase in weight and increase in fatness. So, but the shahid here, and the evidence from this, this hadith is, That the best of all generations. And this is where the evidence comes from. All right, so when we're talking about uh, following the understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah, we follow it uh, based on those three generations. If any other generation comes later on and goes against the understanding of those three generations, we don't accept it. We don't accept it. And this is, this is, the, this is the understanding when we talk about real Salafiyah. We're not talking about the Salafiyah, what the people run around and say that they're Salafi. When we talk about actually following the Salaf, this is what we're talking about. And this is the understanding. So for you to really, really say that you're Salafi, that you're really, really following the Salaf, but you don't even know, you, you're not even seeking the knowledge to understand, like for example, the understanding of these three generations and, and, and all the different things, not just, not just the Amur of Akhirah. Because you could take, like for example, the, the book al Sharia, Lil Ajuri, and also a book by Lala Ka'i, where they bring all the, the Akhirah of the, of the people of the past, of the Salaf, with the Asanid. So you can understand the aqidah of the salaf, but also to understand not just the aqidah, but also the fiqh, to understand how to pray, to understand not, you know, that you're praying with that understanding, that you're looking at the hadith, and then you're looking at the hadith, and then you go back and you look at what were the statements and uh, from the salaf in, in regards to certain hadith that may not be clear. And then you you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that understanding. So it's in all facets of the religion, not just in one aspect of the religion of saying, oh, you know, just saying I'm salafi. But you're not even reading in books of the, the people from before, and you're not trying to follow that, then then you're you just you're just doing lip service, sloganeering. You know, but the real, real understanding of a salafia is that you go back to those three generations and you understand how they understood this this evidence. How did they understand the Quran? How did they under, understand the Sunnah? And we're talking about like you know, we're not talking about like the things that are clear. You know, the things that are clear, you can understand it from the hadith or you can understand it from the ayah directly. But we're talking about the things where there might be some type of disagreement or, or difference in understanding. And we go back and we, this is what we go back to. We go back to the sahaba and see how they understood it. If we can't find it, then we go back to the tabi'een and we see how they understood it. If we can't find it, then that's bad tabi'een and we will find it in one of those three generations. Because those are the best of all generations. All our knowledge, it comes from those three generations. Everything is built on, first off, what came from the sahaba. To the tabi'in. Everything. Everything in our religion is based on that. Nobody from nowadays is going to come with anything that the Sahaba didn't already know. Now we might, it might come in a form that we don't understand because like for example, like Asul al-Fiqh, Nahu and all these types of things, they didn't come until after the Sahaba. But they knew it from, from their natural, from the from the, the knowledge that they gained from the Prophet Sallallahu because the knowledge was pure at that time. So all these sciences of Asul al-Fiqh, of Fara'ad and everything that we have is taken from that, from that understanding. From them. So that's what we go back to, those three generations. And that's knowledge. That's the Kitab al-Sunnah. That's the understanding that we're supposed to have. Not the understanding of some guy that came like 900 years later, 1,000 years later, that goes against the understanding that those three generations had. All right, Or even a person that came, for example, 100 years after the Atba'a at Tabi'in and tries to say like, oh, you know, the hand of Allah, it doesn't actually mean it's all metaphorical. And now he tries to like turn everything in the Quran to like a metaphor, like it's some type of Shakespearean poetry. Now we don't believe that stuff because that's not the way that the, the people of that those three generations, they understood it. They didn't understand it like that. They asked, and they understood that uh, yid means a yid. Well, I can laysa kamifli he shay. That there's nothing like, uh, there's nothing with uh, of any type of similitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
There's nothing like him. So the, the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bima yaliku bi jalalihi. That you know that is in accordance with his greatness. Not like our hand. And not like the hand of any other creation. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a creator. He's had nothing to do with the creation. Not in any, like he doesn't resemble us. Nor do we resemble him. You know, we can only take on certain characteristics. Maybe like, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-qawi. And you know, maybe we can, maybe we can have kuwa. But this is not in the same type of kuwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kuwa ala kulli shay. He controls everything. We don't control anything. Even in our own lives, we have no control over anything. So there's nothing like the Creator. And we can never, ever, ever, you know, take anything and say, oh, this is, you know, this is, you know, like, like the Creator. No, it's not. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he has a hand, he has a hand. But these people that come like later on, you know, the Mu'tazila, the Jahmiya, and the Ash'ariya, and then they come and they start saying, no, it doesn't mean this, it means that. But it's going against the understanding of those three best generations. Then khalas, we don't accept it. It's rejected. It's completely rejected. You know, because our aqidah, our fiqh, and our understanding of the Quran, our understanding of the sunnah, it goes back to those three generations. Not back to anybody else. Not back to anybody that comes after them. And the ijma' it goes back to the ijma' of the sahaba. Doesn't mean like just any ijma' of any time. Like, for example, even the ijma' of this umma here has to go back to the ijma' of the sahaba. And some of the, uh, and uh, there's a difference of opinion in regards to the tabi'een. Like, for example, if the, the tabi'een had ijma' on a masala, would well, that can be considered an evidence or not? And some people say yes, and some people say no. Uh, I'm not qualified to answer that question, so Allah alam. But the ijma' of the sahaba is evidence because they sat with the Prophet sallallahu they understood their religion from the Prophet. So there's no way that the, all of the sahaba can come together on one issue and say that it's like this. Except for that it's haq. Because they all learn their religion from one source. You know, whereas now, once you go past the Sahaba, now you have different sources. People are learning from different things and they have different understandings. So they understand things in different ways. And then by the time you get to the Atba'a Tabi'in, you know, there's like thousands of different sources of the knowledge. So, but here in the, the, with the Sahaba, they have one source. They had the Prophet Sallallahu And he's bringing the religion from Jibril. And Jibril is narrating... From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's the best of all chains of narration. So the ijma' of the sahaba, if they come together on one issue, then it is, uh, is evidence. And uh, qiyas. Now qiyas is like uh, taking like a, it's taking evidence and putting something underneath that evidence that's not s clear. Like, well, the best way to, to understand that, let me, because uh, to explain it in English, Allah uh, Musta'a. Al Amriti, Allah Yirahamu, he said in his poem of another uh, Malwarqat, he said, Amal Qiyasa fahu raddu al Far'i. Al Far' is, is like a, a branch of something. It's not the actual masala itself, but it's, a, it's like a sub, it's a sub issue. And I'll get to that in a second so you understand. So he said, Amal Qiyasa fahu raddu al Far'i, lil Asli fi hukmin sahih and shar'i. To go, you know, he takes a, a sub issue. And it has to be, and, and he gives it the same hukum as the original issue. Okay, hukmin sahihin shari, and and this has to be from a correct, uh, a correct uh, judgment. You know, from the from the Quran and the Sunnah. Li illatin jamiyatin fil hukmi that they both share a certain illa, and the illa it means like for example, why was this thing made haram? All right, what was the purpose, and what about it makes it haram? So if another thing comes along, like for example. Uh, uh, khamar, all right. Khamar has it becomes haram because you khamar al adhin. It causes you to not be able to use your motor fun functions, and that causes you now where you can't you, you get out of the rem remembrance of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and then you can also do things that you're not aware of doing, that you're doing. So now it comes along other things like, for example, like uh, uh, drugs like cocaine and weed and things like that. So now. How, but we don't have any evidence to show, like, for example, that weed is haram. So what do we have to do? So weed would be like a far. It's a far. It's a branch. It's a sub-issue. sub, sub issue, And we put it underneath the issue of the main issue, which is al-khamr. And what khamr does. And what it does in the illa of it being haram. So it, because of the takhmir al dhin because, you know, it, it basically it clouds the mind. So the person, he doesn't have the faculties of a, of a normal person. And he might even get angry and kill somebody. Or you see with the drunk driving accidents and all over the place, you see the, the evidence of, of what, what uh, alcohol does to people. 
you know, and, and the types of dangers and evils that it can get them into. Uh, and even embarrassment where like they might be like at a, an office party and they drink too much and then they start acting stupid and everybody videotapes it and messes up his whole career. You see it. You see this all the time in American society, Western society, that people get destroyed through the alcohol because of their mind and judgment becomes clouded. So anything that also can fall, can fall under that illa, that, that uh, causing of it being haram, will also be haram also. So uh, marijuana, it clouds the judgment. Co cocaine, it, it clouds the judgment because it changes the brain function. It changes the brain function where you're not, where you're not focusing. You don't have the same mental acu uh, like accuracy that you would when you're not under the influence of these types of drugs. So then it becomes haram. And this is qiyas. All right. Uh, we also have the issue of, uh, of uh, uh, for example, like TV. All right. TV is haram. All right. What makes it haram? We don't have the Prophet ﷺ didn't have TV. So this is a sub-issue because there's nothing directly related to TV in the Quran and the Sunnah directly mentioned, bisraha, you know, straight, you know, mentioned directly. But we have the taswir, which is uh, taking photos or drawing drawing pictures. And well, first off, even the taking photos is a sub-issue underneath drawing, which is a taswir, drawing, drawing images. So photos will go under that. And because a video is moving photos, and that's why they used to call them motion pictures. So it goes under the issue of photos. Okay, and photos go under the issue of taswir. So taswir is haram. All right, what is it? What made it haram? Because of what the people, they, they started drawing, and it, they started drawing these images, and then it led to them sculpting these images, and it led to people to worship in these things. And just like nowadays, if you go to any person's room, uh, you know, like a teenager's room, you see posters and all this stuff put up all over their walls. And pictures of famous individuals because they're doing ta'adim of those people. And this is the same thing that led the people from before to start to worship these people. And you see, like, uh, they, you know, how they idolize. And that's why they call them idols. Because they idolize these people. So picture taking is haram. And then motion pictures becomes haram. So TV becomes haram. And this is based on qiyas al-sahih. Because they have a, a linked Allah. And there's a, there's a reason. There's, there's a linked reason of why they're both why this is haram and this has the same illa. Okay, it has the same understanding of why, why it should be haram. So it falls under the same thing, just like alcohol, weed, cocaine, and things like that. So he says, لِئَلَّةٍ جَامِيَةٍ فِي الْحُكْمِ وَلْيُعْتَبَرْ ثَلَاثَةٍ فِي رَسْمِ Alright, ثَلَاثَةٍ فِي رَسْمِ I don't know what he means by وَلْيُعْتَبَرْ ثَلَاثَةٍ فِي رَسْمِ He's talking about the three types of uh, qiyas. And inshallah, we're not going to go into that right now because that's going to turn into a lesson in Asul al-Fiqh. But that's enough to uh, at least get an understanding of the types of dalil. So we have the Quran, we have the Sunnah, we have the Ijma' of the Sahaba, and then we have Al Qiyas al Sahih. And like we said, like uh, here as you saw with the with the issue of like for example the drugs, and the issue of uh, TV and pictures, it falls under a Hadith that is Sahih, and it shares the same Allah. So in this case, it would become evidence, and uh, you know you have to accept it because there is it's not. Once you, you know, because you, you have two types of qiyas, right? You have the qiyas al-sahih or qiyas al-fasid. So the qiyas al-fasid is, is when you're trying to like reach for something. You're trying to say that either something's halal or something haram based on a hadith that is surih on a certain thing. And you're trying to like give this thing an illa that it doesn't have to connect it with this hadith to make it haram. And this is a lot what you see. You see this a lot with the, uh, with the, with the, the groups that broke off from the sunnah you know you see this with the with the sufis you see this with the ikhwan when they try to like uh for example try to give the permissibility of going out and doing protests uh given the permissibility of uh speaking out against uh, the hukam and we have a hadith that are surih jiddin that are very 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 specific about these issues but then they try to go and train change change the evidence and try to bring some types of, you know and they try to this is they try to put sub issues under that issue and try to change it where they might take one hadith let's say you know well the the and they, they use the hadith where the, where the prophet sallallahu was asked about uh, you know what's the best type of jihad and he said uh in the and the sultan and sultan and jair right so they try to say like okay you know the best type of jihad is the the statement of truth and the sultan of jair all right, which is an oppressive ruler. And then they try to put protesting underneath this hadith to say like, okay, 
Uh, see, because this is the statement of the Prophet وسلم, and this is the best form of jihad. And, and protesting is the, you know, kalimat al haq and the sultan al jair. And then they use that. And then they forget all the other evidence that goes against what they just said. So that is qiyas al fasid. Qiyas al sahih is you can't have other evidence that goes against what you're trying to, you know, trying to do. So we have all, we have 40, 50 hadiths that do the tahrim that we could use for like, uh, you know, the impermissibility of it, going out and protesting and speaking against the rulers. If you want to speak up, you speak to them, you have the ability to go and give them advice privately, give them advice. That's what that hadith means. That you go and you give the, you know, you give the leader advice. You give him, a, you know, advice to, to follow the kitab and follow the sunnah. And that he fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his dealings with the people. Not just with his dealings with the people, but he has to understand that he, he's a, He's, he's put on this uh, on this earth. He's a human being and he's, he's still charged with worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still in control of everything. That his that he might be a, a you know a ruler, but his ruler his ruling is, you know, is you know, it's only by the permission of Allah. You know, and he still has to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give him that advice. But to like take that type of hadith and then say the protester, uh, you know, we have to go out and get you know, protest against the ruler and say because of this hadith, that's what you call qiyas al fasid. And the qiyas al sahih is what you saw from the from the drugs and uh, with the drugs going back to Khamar and the uh, the, the movies and the and the TV going back to taswir. That is qiyas al sahih. Whether you agree with it or you don't agree with it, some people might say, "Well, you know what? The video is live, then it's not the same as the video being recorded because once it's recorded, then it becomes a taswir." You know, and uh, but still, the the point is, is that it's qiyas al sahih. And it does, and you can actually look at it and say, yes, that does fall under that hadith. But in this case, with like the protests and speaking out, of, nah, they don't have evidence for that. And their evidence, it does not, it does not, you know, that does not fall in the same illa. Wallahu alam. Wa ilahuna subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika shadu wa la ilaha ila ant astaghfiruku wa atubu ilayk.